First of all, I wish to... Am I on? <laughs> Take me off. <laughs> I want to congratulate. It's a fine orchestra, a very excellent band. And I notice that each musician is an artist in, in his own right. Marvelous. It's only when they play together they have a little problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's marvelous. Hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I really don't know exactly what to do, but uh, I had an experience recently. I was uh, conducting. Are you interested in music? Yes. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> I, I had an experience recently. I, I had an experience was conducting the yeah. magic flute, Mozart's opera, you know, Mozart, poor Mozart. You would only from here up, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that girl over there, she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and, uh, he really, he was only a, a bust, you know. Uh, you have, <laughs> you have seen replicas of Mozart, of course. Well, anyway, um, when I conducted, or just before I went into the uh, conducting that opera, the rehearsals, of course, I read everything I could about Mozart. And uh, I found out that in my youth, of course, I had also studied about Mozart. And uh, I found out that between that time and this time when I did the opera, nothing much had changed so far as Mozart was concerned. But, <laughs> but I found an opera that is very little known, and it's a very short opera, and it is by Mozart, therefore I think it has great uh, interest for music lovers and or perhaps people who hate music anyway. Because, uh, no, no. <laughs> Am I keeping you? <laughs> well, it's, I'd like to just give you a few highlights of this particular opera. It's in, only in one act. It begins when the curtain rises, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, you couldn't see a thing, obviously. <laughs> on the stage are two trees, one on each side, of course, uh, which indicates a kind of a limited a size forest. <laughs> and the tenor comes in from one side. He's supposed to meet his soprano, but she hasn't arrived yet. So he hides himself <laughs> behind one of the trees. <laughs> this is a very rich station here. They have many cameras. <laughs> happy country, you know? <laughs> yeah. Of course you know it. What? Oh, this is a piano, yeah, now. And um, he is supposed to meet his soprano, but she hasn't arrived yet, so he hides himself behind one of the trees. And uh, little by little, she comes in. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she can't find him because he's behind the tree and she doesn't know that. But she must have seen that during rehearsals because uh, she, <laughs> so she just pretends that she doesn't know it. What's that thing hanging down there? <laughs> oh, we are not connected, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now he goes, she goes behind the other tree. Now they're both standing behind each tree and the chorus comes in, but nobody knows why. <laughs> except Mozart, and he's dead, of course. <laughs> yeah. Now, the father comes in, and he's very, her father comes in, he's very angry because she's not his daughter, really, and uh, <laughs> that has nothing to do with the opera. I found that out myself, because this, <laughs> this is what we call research. <laughs> 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 
And, uh, <laughs> and uh, well, he decides that she must die, and they all want to go home early anyway, so... <laughs> She dies, and that's the end of the opera. I just want to give you just a few of the tunes and the melodies and, and, and uh, indication of a couple of areas that are very interesting, and for, particularly for music lovers. The Steinway Piano Company has asked me to announce that this is the Yamaha piano. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful piano, by the way. I played it this afternoon, and... Uh, I like it very much. You have three pedals. I only have two feet, but I don't know. Why. <laughs> I guess the one in the middle is for overdrive. <laughs> oh, yeah, opera. Now, first you hear the overture. And then when your tour is over, of course, you hear the, the, uh, the rest of the opera. Now you hear, you go to the opera house and you hear the conductor's footsteps when he enters the orchestra pit. Pit. Isn't it a shame to call it an orchestra pit? <laughs> Some good music comes out of there once in a while, you know. <laughs> you could call it a ditch. <laughs> Sounds better, pit. Anyway, he comes now and you hear his footsteps. You think he limps. <laughs> he walks sideways. <laughs> That's where the microphone is. Is that the one? Is that the one that works? There are two microphones. Oh, I'm in stereo. Now you hear the beginning of the overture. <laughs> this was the first part of the overture. Now you hear the second part, which is exactly the same. <laughs> that was from Tosca, what you did there. Tosca, second act. <laughs> Now this little blip is an extra blip we have in case we should run short of blips, but that is not <laughs> also good for the latecomers, they can get at least one blip. Now the curtain rises and the tenor comes in from that side in a single file. <laughs> Now the leading lady comes in. She's a, she's a uh, uh, quite a heavy soprano. She <laughs> carries a lot of weight to the opera, and uh, <laughs> she comes in in a single pile. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> she goes behind the other tree. <laughs> Which hides her, of course. Almost. <laughs> now the chorus comes in. The lights are dim, and you can hardly see them, and that's why they are dressed in a kind of cheap underwear. <laughs> because why spend a lot of money for costumes when no one can see them? <laughs> and that's the way the management of this network feels about it, or whatever it is, and uh, that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> Yamaha. <laughs> Asshole. 
I speak a little Japanese, you know. <laughs> you didn't know that. You know how I learned it? It's very interesting because there is a way you can learn to speak almost any language. At night while you sleep, under the pillow you put a, uh, a tape recorder and then you put a tape or a cassette in it. And if you keep running that every single night for maybe weeks or months, whatever time is necessary, then you subconsciously, um, un un what do you call it, uh, you, you pick it up, you know, in, in, your, in your mind. And, and that's the way you can learn to, to, to speak it. All the way around there. And, uh, <laughs> I learned to speak Japanese that way. That's why I said uh, Yamaha. And <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, the problem is I can only speak it when I'm sound asleep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where were we? Oh, yes, in the opera. That. Well, it is. It's actually uh, almost over now. The father comes in and he is, uh, he's the bass. <laughs> he has now told her everything he knows and she's uh, supposed to pick it up, and he had told her now that she must die, and she now sings her death aria. dies by stabbing herself between the two big trees there on the stage. <laughs> 